Today's theme is about letting go versus the idea of letting in. Come on and join me on the mat. Welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name is Sandra. Take a comfortable seat, close your eyes, and get really, really present. Slow, deep inhale. Softly let go of the breath. And just be for a moment. <clears throat> so today's theme developed out of, I was reading an article. Well, first I had sought one out and then I found what I was looking for, an article about death for my upcoming death cafe. And it was, what I'd stumbled on was an old interview done with Thich Nhat Hanh. And then after reading that, realized he passed away in the past 24, 48 hours. So this theme kind of turned into perhaps maybe an homage to him, but definitely a focus on his take on the Buddhist view of death. So as you sit with your eyes closed, you're going to realize throughout what I read to you out of that interview that the breath is going to be key. We already knew that as yogis on the mat, but in preparation for the discussion and idea of death, we have to keep coming back to the ever-present and ever-changing breath. So give me a deep inhale, big cleansing exhale. Inhale, take both arms up, bring the palms together and release them home to your heart in prayer pose. And as always, we pause here to set an intention for your practice. When you're done, release the fingertips to the earth beside you. Walk the hands away. Inhale that left arm up. Take a side bend to the right. And I want you to lean into this and then gently push away. Open up that top shoulder. You shouldn't see it in front of you. If you do, you've come down too far. Pull it back. So just playing here with the breath and the movement. I want to warm up the sides of the body so we can come into a supported side bend. Each small movement. Um, allowing yourself to consciously release tension, work through any stiffness. A couple more. When you're ready, come back to center, release that left arm. Pause here, close your eyes. What do you feel? Where do you feel it? Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Take that right arm up, same thing, but this time to the left. Create your own vinyasa. more times, maybe going a little deeper, reaching a little further. 
and then inhale, come back up, exhale, release the right hand, close your eyes, tap in again to the sensations that you feel. Where are they? And then inhale, take both arms up, palms together. Exhale to the heart. So before we come into a supported side bend, I want to do a little twisting. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sit up tall. Right hand behind you, left hand to the right knee. Inhale, find your length. Exhale, really peaceful twist to the right. So I wanna make sure that I cite this article clearly and correctly. It's by Eliza Barclay. Um, it was written, a, it's written based on an interview um, with Thich Nhat Hanh from 2018. And it's called Thich Nhat Hanh's Final Mindfulness Lesson, How to Die Peacefully. So this took place, what, three and a half, four years ago? Deep inhale. Exhale, slowly release. Close your eyes, feel that. And then left hand behind you, right hand across, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, another peaceful twist, this time to the left. Make sure that focus is on your breath. If your mind took you somewhere else, gently pull it back. When you get to an exhale, softly release, close your eyes and feel. Okay. Let's grab your bolster. Um, you can use a pillow or a blanket if you don't have one. I'm gonna bring that behind you horizontally across your mat, kind of in the middle. And then if you want something out there far, far away to catch your head, you can put your blanket out there if you want to. So supported side bend, get that left hip right next to the bolster or pillow, sit up really tall so that we can just gently spill the ribs over the prop, take your time. I'm gonna take that left arm and bring it out in front of me so there's plenty of room for my left shoulder. And then I'm choosing to drop my head to the ground. That's up to you, right? If you need something for your head to rest on, go ahead and grab it. You can do whatever you want with the legs. You can keep them bent, you can straighten them out. You can do whatever you want to with that top arm, right? And you could reach it way overhead, keep that shoulder open. You could plant the hand in front of you. You could take that arm behind you and work on opening up the right shoulder. So whatever makes you happy, be present with it, be conscious of your decision and make it fit your needs. <clears throat> so let me back up to what I said this theme was about. My upcoming death cafe, um, you know, death cafes are about creating a safe and open space for people to come together from all around the world to talk about death in whatever capacity they want to. It's not a place for grieving. Um, it's a discussion like, you know, what do, what do we think happens after death or how do we want to go out? What control do we have if we have any? Um, what does the space look like? What have I uh, told my kids, my family? It could be anything, right? And as the facilitator, I do not have an agenda. I do not try to guide the conversation. However, I do recognize that sometimes you get a silence or maybe, maybe the group's not sure how they want to start. So I like to have a backup plan in my mind of, well, what could we talk about? If you recall, in the Yoga Sutra, Patanjali says that the fear of death is 
our main source of all fears. And if we can resolve the fear of death, we release the other fears. The fear of death is tied to attachment, right? <clears throat> I would argue that most fears are tied to attachment because they're also uh, associated with our fear of change and uncertainty. But anyway, so I come across this article um, where the person who did the interview was talking to a monk that was just under Thich Nhat Hanh and it was kind of analyzing his perspective and his theories. And they get to the topic of letting go. Letting go comes up a lot in my world, I guess, with the topic of death, because people want to know when someone has died, how, how on earth would you let go of that? How do you let go of them? Is that equating, um, or is that the same as letting go of their memory? Then what if I forget? I don't want to let go. I want them back, right? That's the attachment issue. <clears throat> And I thought this was really well explained. And so the, the monk that's being interviewed, Fat Dong, he says, of course, letting go is one of our main practices. It goes along with recognizing the impermanent nature of things of the world and of our loved ones. He goes on to say that it's not a letting go of the person per se. It's, a, it's kind of looking at death in a different way that everything is within you, not without you, right? Or on the outside of you. So if someone close to you passes, you see them as separate from you, right? They're on the outside. Does that mean they are gone? Or can you take the Buddhist point of view and pull that back to this person is within me? And this is where the breath becomes really important. So can I breathe in this person's essence, recognize that that person's memory stays within me, and that is where the person lives on. So letting go becomes kind of a different, I don't know, and it takes on a different definition because if I look at it that way, I haven't let go at all, have I? Perhaps what I've let go of is the attachment to the idea that my loved ones who are deceased are gone and outside of me. I let go of that idea. And I almost switch it to the idea that they're within me. And so it's a game, right? You see that as a game? All right, give me a deep inhale. Big exhale. All right. I want you to go ahead and straighten out your legs if they're not already. And then let's bend that top leg. Right hand reaches behind you. See if you can grab the top of that right foot and draw the heel in toward the glute. So a couple of things here. Um, you might need to lift that knee way up high to get a hold of the foot. But you be really careful about how you're pulling the foot in so you don't tweak the knee. And then can we try to set that right thigh down on top of the other? Go slowly. Use your strap here if you can't catch the foot. The strap is your friend. Okay? So in talking about letting go, we need to let go of the idea that the props are because we can't do something. That is so not true. So we let go of that, and then what we gain is the wisdom to see that the props help us practice ahimsa, non-harming. All right, give me another deep breath in. As you exhale, gently release the leg. Take that top leg in front of the left, just slightly, and now bend that left knee, bringing the foot in towards you. So here, you might want to allow yourself to rest your head on your left hand so you're propped up a little bit. And again, you do you. 
either use your strap or see if you can take the right hand and grab onto that left foot. But I don't want to lift the left foot way up high. I don't want to twist the knee. So I'm pulling back my right shoulder. I'm trying to keep that left foot down on the earth and then I'm pulling it in toward me. Use your strap. You don't have a strap and you can't reach the foot. Don't do this. It's okay. Do what you can. Now close your eyes. Ah, follow the breath. All right, one more inhale here. Exhale, let go of that foot. We're slowly going to meander back up. Take your time. Come back to the seated position. Sit up top, close your eyes. <clears throat> What are we doing here? We're being present. Notice the body, notice the breath. Maybe you just add a smile to your face and notice what the smile feels like. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna take our supported side, bend to the other side. So. Move your bolster to the right hip or turn all the way around on your mat, whatever works for you. Right hip, right up against your prop, sit up tall. Gently lengthen and pour the ribs over your prop. Ah, and make this pose what you want it to be. <clears throat> so, in this article, Bob Dung says, breathing in, I breathe with my teacher within me. So you can substitute breathing in, I breathe with my past loved one who's within me, right? Breathing out, I see him smiling with me. When we make a step with gentleness, we let him, the teacher, the person who passed on, walk with us and allow that person to continue within our steps. So letting go, he says, is the practice of letting in, letting this person be alive within you and to see that this person is or was more than just a physical body. So letting go, I think that expression kind of freaks some people out. How do I do that? What does that mean? What am I letting go of? Can I ever get it back? How does it feel to say letting in instead? So what does that mean then if we were trying to let go of baggage and, and things we're carrying with us that don't serve us, like worry? I don't want to let in worry. So we reframe. You can either say, I'm working on, or I am, letting go of worry. What's the opposite? I am letting in peace. So see that subtle shift you might need to make when you are taking this to consider different topics, right? I'm letting go of stress. I'm letting in the opportunity for relaxation. So I want you to pause here and I want you to think about what you are working on letting go of and how can you rephrase that so that the sentence says something about letting in?
Deep inhale, cleansing exhale. Let's go ahead and straighten out the legs. And then take that top leg, bend the knee, bring the foot behind you, see if the left hand can grab onto it. See if you can gently set the thigh down on top of the right one. Use your strap if you need it. Pull back that left shoulder. Feel the stretch, feel the breath, feel the mat beneath you, feel the prop that's supporting you. So everything bringing you back to the present, right? Just like the breath does. All right, gently let go. Straighten that leg out and then take it slightly in front of the bottom leg so you can bend the bottom knee, grab that foot. And again, watch this foot, right? We don't want it up in the air. Try to drop it down, pull that left shoulder back to give you the room to do that. Deep inhale. Exhale, let go of that foot, stretch the legs out. And then let's gently roll onto our, well, our stomach side. I was going to say stomach, but really, and I ended up more with my ribs on the bolster. Probably you did too than my stomach. So that's where I want you to be. Tops of the feet on the earth, hands on the bolster or prop you're using. And then I want you to be conscious of the shoulders. So purposely pull them up to hug the neck. And then let's roll them back and down. And you'll notice just doing that kind of gives you a little lift here. Pull the shoulder blades in, push the pelvic bone down, lift up a little bit taller and hold it right here. Remember holding doesn't mean you're holding the breath. Deep breath in, big exhale. Option A, stay right here. Option B, you can push your hands into the bolster, just come up a tad more. And then let's all of us come back down, bring the arms out in front for a moment, drop the head, relax. <clears throat> when you're ready, let's super gracefully there, make our way up to table. I'm gonna leave the bolster underneath me. Find your cat cow. And then come back to table. Let's tuck the toes. We'll do one down dog right here. Couple deep breaths. Where do you feel the stretch? How would you define it? And, excuse me, and then release the knees. We're coming into supported balasana child's pose. So whatever you want to do with that bolster, I'm on board with. Just make sure you're happy. There should be a smile on your face when you close your eyes. And let go.
So one of the other really useful analogies that was in this article is um, the idea of body, mind, spirit. And if it's the body that moves on or is eliminated in the death process, how, I guess, do we fail to recognize that mind and spirit have to go somewhere or remain? Yeah. And so this analogy in the article is about a stream and how maybe we are not so much of an individual self, but we're part of the water in the stream as it moves, right? And so we're attached to our ancestors. And as we continue down the stream, we are leaving parts of ourselves behind that remain with the people that live on after us. And so again, we come back to this idea that people who have died must still remain within the people that are still living. We are all of the same stream and the water. <clears throat> So also in this article, he states, there is dying in the sense of letting this body go, letting go of feelings, emotions, things that we call our identity and practicing to let those go. And sure is a practice, isn't it? Okay, now hang on right here. The trouble is we don't let ourselves die day by day. Instead, we carry ideas about each other and ourselves. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's detrimental to our growth. We brand ourselves and imprison ourselves to an idea. Letting go is a practice, not only when you reach 90, it's one of the highest practices. This can move you toward equanimity, a state of freedom, a form of peace waking up each day as a rebirth. Now that is a practice. That is what Fat Dung stated in this interview. So you're in a restorative pose. You're in a very nurturing restorative pose, child's pose. I want you to think about what would it have felt like when you woke up this morning before you pushed the covers off and you felt your feet on the earth? If you had stated somehow to yourself, this morning is a rebirth. The yesterday me has passed on. Here's the new me. What do I intend to do? Oftentimes we're waking up and we're like dragging yesterday's stuff with us. So you swing your feet over the edge of the bed, they touch the ground and you start to get up and then you're pulled back and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about this big burden on the bed with me and you put that over your shoulder and now there's tension and there's stress and, and there's a buckle to our spine because we're bent over carrying this. And we get up and the day seems hard. Go ahead and turn your head in child's pose if it's turned to one side. So what if we were to adopt this practice that every day is a rebirth, every time when we go to sleep, it's similar to a death, and we let go. And in letting go, we let in. What are we letting in? We're letting in the possibility that the next day can be amazing and fabulous and new and inspiring and free. Free of what? free of the stuff that we chose not to carry with us overnight. So Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, this body is not me. I am not limited by this body. I am life without boundaries. I have never been born and I have never died. So think again of that stream. It's a constant. The water keeps emerging from somewhere, right? And we're part of that stream. And while part of us may die off, the rest of us is still in that water. 
and it's being absorbed by the people who follow. So we are within everyone. Yeah. I think this might be an easier way to look at the death topic than I'm not going to think about death until it's imminent. Someone's about to pass before me. Then I'll go into panic mode and figure out what I have to do. Rather than every day is a practice of letting go and breathing people in, holding them within you, and moving forward day by day. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> All right, give me a deep inhale. Let it go. When you're ready, slowly begin to push your way back up. Let's move the props aside as we do that. And then come on down. Ah, on your sit bones, stretch the legs out in front of you for a moment, flexing the feet. Close your eyes. And then let's draw that left knee in, not super close. And also take it a little bit to the left so we have some space between the legs to work with. Keep that right foot flexed, sit up tall. Left arm's coming inside the left leg. And from here, we're just going to let the fingers draw us into a little bit of a fold. I want you to stop where you start to feel a stretch and just move around there. And then we'll come back up, hug that left knee in closer. I pulled that foot back in so it's just inside the right leg. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the right hand behind me for support. That left shoulder is gonna drop inside the left knee. And you can use a strap here if you want it. But I want you to release the attachment of where you think the arm has to end up. So in which case, you wouldn't need a strap because you don't care if you get to the quote unquote final pose, right? So left shoulder is inside the left knee, sit up tall, reach that left arm out, turn the palm to the earth, and then thumb down towards the ground. So the palm's facing out to the left. From here, I can start to drop the top of my hand down towards the ground and allow this arm to wrap around behind. And maybe it ends up over by the left hip. Who knows, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's somewhere out on the floor. Maybe you turn the palm down and you hang on with the fingertips. Up to you. <clears throat> you can stay wherever you ended up as long as you're lengthening. If you wanna add on, bring the right hand behind you. Sit up more, take that twist, pull the right shoulder back. My um, left arm is pushing into my knee and my knee is supporting me to deepen this twist. Breathe. So again, the hands might not be anywhere near there. Maybe the left fingers are on the ground. Maybe the right fingers are reaching behind you. Maybe you're using your strap. Deep in the breath. Be present. You're probably thinking, how can I not? This pose is ridiculous. Give me a deep inhale. Exhale, release the whole darn thing. Stretch out that left leg. Take your hands behind you in any manner you want and slouch back. Just relax your drop the head. Relax the feet. It's all about the breath right now. So instead of letting go of that pose, what do you want to let in?
All right, back up to staff, Dandasana. We're gonna bend the right knee. I'm keeping it a little bit loose away from me and then I'm gonna open it out so I have space to bring that right shoulder inside the right knee. And then remember both arms are reaching forward. We're just playing here for a moment. Feel the stretch, breathe into it. Come on back up, pull the right knee in, hold it there for a moment. All right, take the left hand behind you to support you. Right arm inside the right leg. Sit up, but tip forward so you can get the shoulder and just inside the knee, right? Reach the right arm out, turn the palm down to the earth, then the thumb, so the palm is now facing to the right. Slowly sweep the top of your hand down toward the floor so the elbow can bend and you can get that arm somewhere around you. Lengthen, that's the important part. And then if you want to add on and add that twist, pulling the left shoulder back. Breathe. Big inhale, exhale, release, stretch out the right leg, hands behind you, slouch, relax the feet, drop the head. When you're ready, push your way back up, grab all of your props, and then take the legs into a V, Upa Vista Konasana. So we're going to find a restorative pose here. Yes, we are. It's going to be okay. But grab as many props as you want or think you might need so that you can get into a comfortable fold and feel supported. So that might mean building a tower up on your bolster. It could be as simple as tipping that bolster so it props you up. Whatever makes you happy, that's where I want you to start to find right now. And when you get there, close your eyes. Feel the stretch, be present with it. What are you letting in? So Thich Nhat Hanh had said these many years ago, you know, when I pass, don't put my ashes in, you know, some type of vase. I don't want to be trapped inside. What he said was, please do not put my ashes in a vase. Lock me inside and limit who I am. I know this will be difficult for some of you. If you must build a stupa, though, please make sure you put a sign on it that says, I am not in here. Who's the sign for? That's for us, right? In addition, you can also put another sign that says, I am not out there either. And a third sign that says, if I'm anywhere, it's in your mindful breathing and in your peaceful steps. So we come back to this idea of within. And that's a great topic too for a death cafe, right? Who are the tombstones for? Who are the urns for? What part of death is for the living? What aspect of it is for the dying?
So Thich Nhat Hanh wrote this. Breathing in, repeat, in the here, in the here. Breathing out, in the now, in the now. Although these are different words, they mean exactly the same thing. I have arrived in the here. I have arrived in the now. I am home in the here. I am home in the now. So hanging out in your fold, whatever that looks like, focusing on the breath. I am here, however you want to say it or word it. All right, deep breath in. Exhale, slowly make your way back up. Push my props off to the side. And from here, I'm gonna plant my feet on the mat. My knees are bent, feet are hip distance apart. Take your hands behind you, fingers facing in. Inhale, excuse me, inhale, lift the heart, lift the gaze. Exhale, round out the spine, drop the chin. Keep going. All right, we're changing this up a bit. Inhale, push the hands and feet into the earth and lift the hips up so the heart reaches for the ceiling. Exhale, come back down, set the hips down, round out through the back, drop the chin. Inhale, lift up. You might wanna add breath retention so this is not a fast movement. Hold breath. And when you're ready to exhale, slowly come back down. Drop the chin, relax, hold the breath. All right, keep going. One more. <clears throat> when you finish that last one, let's <clears throat> take the feet into cobbler, Baddha Konasana. If you want props under your knees, go ahead and add them. Sit up tall, but then I want you to take the right hand to grab the left wrist and go ahead and massage that wrist out. That tabletop pose felt a little tough on the wrist, so I want you to give them some attention. And then do the other wrist.
Now, when you're ready, release your hands down to your feet. Get the thumbs inside the soles and massage the feet out. Don't ignore the toes. Get into the arches. <clears throat> Come on, use some muscle here. You can get the thumbs on the inside and gently peel open the feet. And then go ahead and bring the soles together. If they're not, grab onto the toes, sit up tall, close your eyes. Breathing in, I'm in the here. Breathing out, I'm in the now. One more breath. And then when you're ready, <clears throat> if you have blocks under the knees, go ahead and slide them out. We're gonna take the legs into double pigeon. So left leg's gonna be on the bottom, right leg's gonna be on the top. Line up the right ankle and I had to think about this right left and left knee first, flex the feet and then see what's going on between the left foot and the right knee. If you can drop that right knee down, do so. If it's hanging out and the hip flexors are going, yeah, no, that's not happening. Take a prop and allow that knee to rest on something. Probably the blanket's a little more comfortable than the block. Yeah. All right. Sit up tall. Big inhale. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips to find a little bit of a fold. And if you want to add some movement here, go ahead. When you're ready to come back up, let's slowly round through the spine, head heavy. Gently use the hands to help you lengthen the spine and then the head will be the last part. So lift, breathe in. Big exhale. Let's go ahead and switch double pigeons. So the other leg is on the bottom. Remember to, you're trying to line up the feet and the knees and try to keep the feet flexed if you can. Again, we don't want body parts hanging out in space. So put a prop underneath that left knee if you need it. Sit up tall, close your eyes. <clears throat> Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge forward. Why are we hinging? Well, we're trying not to round out the spine. Find the stretch and then add some movement if you want. You can work on the shoulders. You can drop one forward and then the other. When you're ready to come back up, we're going to round through the spine, drop the head. Your hands walk up onto the feet, maybe then the thighs, sit up tall, and then the chin lifts back up. Deep breath in and let it go. Perfect. If there's a perfect. All right, go ahead and free the legs. You might want to stretch them out for a moment and walk them out. While you're doing that, Kind of peruse your scene so that you can grab the props you want for Shavasana. Figure out where you want them to go. And then go ahead and set that up. <clears throat> Again, make sure you're comfortable. Body parts are not hanging in space. Everything is supported. 
Make sure you're warm enough. Give me a deep inhale. You might even stretch out through the legs and the arms on that inhale and then exhale, let go, relax, soften. And then focusing on the breath. Letting in. Exhale, you could say, I am in the here and now. Inhale, letting in. Exhale, I'm in the here and now. Breathing in. Exhale, I'm in the here and now. You'll hear my voice when it's time to come back from Shavasana.
Thich Nhat Hanh said, letting go gives us freedom and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If in our heart, we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. To so make today a day about letting in. Give me a deep inhale. Speaking of letting in, cleansing exhale. Bring some movement into the body, stretch out the arms, stretch through the legs, rotate the ankles, wiggle the fingers, bring life back in. Remember each day, think about being reborn, your new life. Give me another deep inhale, big exhale. And then allow your hands to come rest at your heart in prayer pose. The light in me bows to the light in you. When I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.